Hi, welcome back. In today's video, we'll talk about Power Automate, Forms, and SharePoint lists. A comment in one of my previous videos um, was um, asking about how we can control the forms that are being submitted and saved into a SharePoint list. For example, when someone submits um, um, a form and that should be then saved in a SharePoint list from with Power Automate, how can we see if um, an entry is already there and if it's in the same week, then replace it, otherwise create a new one. Let's take a look how we can do that. So as you can see here, I've already created a demo form. I think I've used this uh, in a couple, in a video, previous video like, as well. And we are not going to concentrate about the, on, on the questions. It doesn't matter because this is uh, use case based and um, we are not also not, not going to build um, anything today. I've already built this. I want this video to be short. Uh, it's just a response to that comment. And uh, we'll just show you how, how we did it or how I did it. So I have here a form and a couple of questions. And when I submit it, this will end up being saved in the SharePoint list. In my SharePoint list, um, the important columns are first name, last name, and the calendar week. Because I want to see if that user has submitted something in this week or, or not. So what I do next is here in Power Automate, um, I get the response or uh, the trigger is when a new response is submitted. Then I get the response details from that response. Then I do a compose here where I grab the calendar week. So this is the formula. I can show it if I copy this here and paste it in here so that you can see it. So what we do here, we add divide and then the day of year. This is the output that's coming from the form. Now I, I get the um, get response details from the body the submit date. And then I uh, divide it with seven and add one. So that's the, the, the formula or the, the function that I use to, to get the calendar week. And I do this in a compose action. Next, I go into the SharePoint list and I grab the items that have um, the title equals first name because here this first name is the title of um, column of, from, from the SharePoint list. And question two is the, um, the old name of the column or the internal name of the column. In my, in my case, I've uh, renamed it to last name. Um, so that should be equal to the last name coming from the forms and the calendar week, which is this column here, is equal to the one coming from the compose action with a date from the moment when this forms has been submitted. And if that uh, get items action finds anything, it should find in, in my case only one because you are only allowed to have one per week. Um, I do a condition here to, to measure that length of that body. So I do a length of the output get items body value, you know, the value of the get items. And if it, that is, oops, sorry, if that is equal to zero, then it means that there is no entry there. That means um, for that week with that first name and win with that last name. And then Power Automate will see, okay, that's, there's no entry and it will go down this path, which is a create item. You know, it will create a new item with all the information coming from the forms uh, form. Uh, the status value, it will be put standard as new and the calendar week will be uh, then written in here coming from the outputs. If this is not equal to zero, then it means it has found something and um, based on the logic of this flow and how we, how we, how we set up the, the, the SharePoint list and so on, um, it should only find one. Although it creates an apply to each because anytime you use um, the, um, a value, a dynamic value from a get items action, it will always put it in apply to each you know, because a get items is also expecting more than one item or it could uh, get more than one item. For that reason, it will create an apply to each, but uh, again, as I said, it should only run once. 
And here I search it from the ID, which comes from the get items section. And then I put here the first name and all the information that uh, comes from the forms um, submission and the output from the compose action and I update that item. Okay, so we can take a look um, how this runs and I'm going to set this on test manually so that it uh, triggers instantly, otherwise we could, we should have, we would uh, have to wait. And I'm going to create now a new user or a new uh, form that's not in the list. So uh, first name will be Max Mustermann. Uh, this is a typical uh, general or generic name in Germany. Uh, let's put a number here. Again, it doesn't matter about what the questions are about. Um, CO location is Germany and then I submit it. So uh, let's go back to Power Automate and take a look. Okay, the submission was, um, was has triggered the flow. Get the response details. There is our Max Mustermann. And uh, in the Compose action, it found out or it calculated the, the week we have, the week of the year or the week of the calendar because of the date when we submitted it. And this week is still the um, 46th week of the year. Then it went and gets that item. So title equals max and question two, which is last name equals Mustaman and calendar week equals 64, uh, 46, sorry. And then it, it looks in the condition and it is true because the length of the values of this um, get items body is equal to zero. And we can see it here, there is, um, here's the value and it, it calculates the, the length of this here, of this part in the body, the value. And because it's empty, it's also zero. So because it is zero, it goes down this path and it should, has, it should have created my new item. And we can take a look. Here is our Max Mustermann a few seconds ago and all the information we've passed from the forms, it's saved in here. So now let's say um, a week passed by, but, or no, let's say we are still in the same week and that user tries to submit another form, maybe, I don't know. Um, let's say we are dealing here with tasks or um, something else. And we want that if the same user in the same week submits uh, another form, we want that data to be updated right? because, um, I don't know, maybe something changed and the user wants to change the data. So let's go back to the, oh no, first let's remove that and set our Power Automate flow to be ready. Okay, there it is. So now it's waiting and let's submit another response. So we need to take the same uh, information, Mosterman, and uh, let's see, did I write it the same way? Yeah because it's, uh, the last name is important as well. And let's say this time the phone number changed. No, we want to say it's all sevens. And the job title is not, um, I always go back to the wrong one. Uh, it's not CEO anymore, but this time it's CFO. And the location is not Germany, it's France. Again, don't concentrate on the questions, um, France. And now if I submit this, okay. Automate should have should run now. There it is, and it got my new submission. Here's our the changes, the CFO, and we also change the location. Here it is. Now the compose still calculates six, uh, 46 because it's still the same week, and in the get items now it is looking again for the same information based on the first name, last name, and the calendar week. So it should find one item. And as you can see here, this condition resulted to false because the, the length is not equal to zero. And we can see it if we go to the outputs, click download, and here where it says body value, it's not empty anymore. Instead, it starts with all this information 
coming um, from um, from SharePoint, you know, which is um, is my information from the the from my from my account and so on. No? Anyways, as you can see, this is not zero; it's one, and my apply to each did also run once. Although it the get items is for getting all items. No? Because we are using the filter query, it only found one. And based on the logic of how this flow works, or no, in our based on our case, use case, uh, it should only run once. And we can see here it has updated uh, our information with a new number, job title, and the location. And we can see now in SharePoint we have the new information here. Yeah. So instead of having this uh, validation with with the SharePoint list, you can use like another list. It doesn't have to be the same SharePoint list. Maybe you you have like another list or another ex, like an Excel table um, containing this information, you know, where you save the number of submissions per week per user, and um, instead of doing a get items from from this list. You can do a get items or from 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 another table from another uh, storage, and uh, important is that you calculate the week, no? so that you can see if that old submission has been in the same week or not, and also this is a very important part of course, so that you can um, see if the item exists or not. No? I hope you liked it. I mean, um, this was a very short video. I just wanted to answer um, to uh, the requests on the comments, and uh, I thought it was a good idea so that we can we can showcase it how you can do it. Hope you like it. If you did so, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And um, yeah, catch you the next one. <laughs> Bye.